comfort pick comp and really didn't make a lot of picks to kill us. We're at three kills to what? Like 40 minutes for the side of MVP, even though they had so many tools. You couldn't tell me of one notable Ash Arrow in the entire game from Maha. So maybe Caitlyn first pick is what MVP really want. And for now, it's certainly available. Good to see that one make its way through. Final ban's getting ready to happen. You would expect maybe the Syndra ban as well from the Rock Tigers. So in a bit of a pickle here, because they have to leave either that, the Caitlyn, or the Elise open, because it's unlikely that MVP would ban either of those away. And I like this. The Gragas ban does come out. So Songwan's most played, Linderung's MVP champion. And also, like you say, suddenly, is it Caitlyn? Is it Elise? What is left open on the side of Rock's Tigers? They will likely trade those picks. They could ban neither and just take what fits their comp the best. MVP would probably take Caitlyn, given that Maha had a really lackluster game on Ash. So first pick Caitlyn is what we expect here from MVP, even if Beyond has been great on the Elise. Not so much in game one, but yeah, Caitlyn available will be snatched up there for Maha. So nothing too shocking, but the Elise very well something that could be snatched here by Song One. You don't even need to use the uh, precursors and the uh, qualifying adjectives there. Certainly will be picked up by the Rocks Tigers, you would imagine. I'm willing to get egg on my face if I'm wrong, but Song Wan is another legacy Elise player, so we'll lock it in there. The egg can stay away from my face. For now. For now, yes. I'll, I'll definitely make some proclamations. Insanely wrong at some point. There's plenty of other opportunities. But what do they want to follow up with is going to be the question. Right, the Talia might be... Well, it's banned, sorry, so uh, scratch that. I wonder if Oriana uh -huh. will egg be selected this game. As, wow, I didn't actually make an egg bet on that one, Achilles. Thank you very much. All right. And here we go. Okay, so Rek'Sai is actually going to be locked in from MVP. I wondered if we would see Rek'Sai today, but I thought it would be our second series from Bless when BBQ play. So MVP, another team to be messing around with Rek'Sai. It's before some of those buffs and tweaks are made well, on patch 7.11, so the rework is there. Rek'Sai can do a lot of damage, but not a lot of agreement on build. I was actually checking out a lot of Rek'Sai games in other regions, and there was some value in the Tiamat rush Rek'Sai, which is something that Beyond innovated, you remember, way back when on Rek'Sai. He was the first ever Tiamat Rek'Sai in the world, so maybe we'll see the return in the LCK of Tiamat Rek'Sai, because we haven't seen the machete into Tiamat build. Stronger in future patches when the AD ratio is a buff, but still an option here, and, and Tom Kench, to answer Elise Ash is a very nice, clean answer for MVP. Yeah, it's going to be trying to deny away that engage comp, the pick comp that Rocks Tigers are piecing together, and it's going to be Bard, a rare one that we have coming out here for Kiba, one of his favorites. Yeah, Bard can definitely answer Tom Kench really well with the duration of the Tempered Fate, stopping the Tom Kench from getting the same disengage on that priority carry, the Caitlyn. So a bit, something, a bit different, a very big favorite for Key, you'll remember, is... Many people around the world marveled at his bard way back when. We're talking end of 2015 when ESC Ever made their big advance through the world stage after winning the Casper Cup. TSM fans won't want to remember that. Key's bard always super famous. And you can start actually banning away some of the strong laning supports into bard. It's okay. I, I, I take that point back. They already have Tom Kench, so they're happy with the lane. They're banning away the mid lane karma to take out any picks that Ian has found success on. Rid of that. Twisted Fate actually banned away from huh. Mickey. Not a ban we've seen against him in a little while because he hasn't been playing it. He hasn't been playing any of these, you know, assassin style, you know, heavy burst mage that we've uh, seen from him in the past. So the question is why ban it? Now you have to think about, hey, mm -hmm. what do they want to pick that Twisted Fate will be strong into? At, or is it just scrim intel? You know, you never really have the full picture of that because, like you say, Twisted Fate has been sparing in 2017 at best. He had a couple of weeks in spring season where he brought it out kind of out of meta. So sad that we won't see the Twisted Fate. Definitely one of the staples for Mickey. Zed and Twisted Fate forever. Kind of the Mickey champions. Even if he tries to make it Orianna this season, I won't believe him. Well, that's not going to be the second ban this time around. So Zed's still on the table for Mickey. There's hope. Hope is alive as Kled is banned away. I mean, they have an Elise, so there's a chance, right? There is a chance that you go physical damage from the mid lane. But again, their standard way of playing till recently has been control mage mid lane. Right now, they are looking for a mid laner. And there you go. It's going to be that Orianna that famously he played for the first time in summer season 2017 after being a pro for almost three years. He played his first Orianna games this season. He's one and four, so it hasn't necessarily been a huge pick for him on the winning side of things. 
does answer the Tom Kench Rek'Sai super well, though. So they're often caught in the Shockwave. Seems like now the Victor might be making its way back onto the Rift, and it will. Locked in for Ian in the mid lane. Played it in his last series and looked very capable in lane. Victor Sion were their solo lanes in that game, and they did very well in the early game against Afrika before predictably making some mismanages in the mid game. And there's a lot of that flavor with the Jarvan being taken the top lane. Great answer to Ash as well. Looking for a top laner. Will it be Linderang jumping on one of these split pushes? He flashed the Jace before at least now considering the Fiora. Fiora into Jarvan's a very explosive matchup. Would be the reverse identity. It'd be ADD trying to make the team plays while Fiora plays for lane. Can they play the other side of the coin? Seems like the Rocks Tigers are going to go ahead and try it. As they do lock this one in for Linderong. Much more aggressive than the Gragas that we saw from him there in game number one. Always surprised to see a team-focused utility mid laner for Mickey and a split pusher in the second round of the draft when those two picks together have very little uh, shared identity. Fiora wants to be away, doesn't want to be a ball carrier for the Fiora, for the Orianna. Wants to be playing her own game. So while Orianna does have safe wave clear, you're not getting the full value out of the Orianna pick. So it just seems like it's going to be 2017 summer comfort for Mickey, but not necessarily a hugely coherent draft. Now it still can come together. There are still win conditions available. But Rock's Tiger's a bit of scattered identity and MVP, predictably, they want to get some picks, Kilios. That they do. See if they can get him this time, because like we said, game one, not really seeing many of those coming through. The Ash Arrow's not utilized properly. And couldn't even lock down the Tom Kench long enough to kill him. With so. Rek'Sai here, if it is the Tiamat or early AD, as has been the way, a lot of pressure onto specifically the Fiora. Level six for both the Rek'Sai and the Jarvan is basically burst range from near full health for the Fiora. All right, could be some deadly stuff if MVP can get ahead. See if they can actually close out a game, stop that losing streak, and maybe even find a win over the Rocks Tigers to take up to game three. Let's go ahead and load back onto Summoner's Rift for game number two. MVP fans still staying strong. Biggest cheers for both teams all season, you would say. Yeah. There's no earth knowing. We mentioned it earlier in the week, but school's finally out for summer, so we do have more people coming. It is a Saturday, but fans are definitely more ready to come watch some esports live in the stadium. Thank you all for joining us on the stream as well. Game one, a long one. Definitely was an endurance test. We'll see if game two can be something a bit different. Tools on both sides to make things happen in the early game, but also the Victors and Fioras who are looking for a couple of items before they really come online. What better way to spend your Saturday morning than watching some nice LCK? Well, you could watch some LPL that's on at the moment. The OPL was on earlier. You've got League of Legends options. Is cool. A new Rocks Tigers cheer. But I said what better way. Oh, Not what other ways. I mean, it's EDG versus WE today. That's a pretty cool matchup. All right, you got me there. That is a pretty good one. Some Rift Rivals bad. I'm going to Rift Rival would here. You, would you rather watch EDG versus WE or MVP versus Rocks Tigers? What year is it? Sadly, 26. <laughs> <laughs> you take what you can get, right? <laughs> we don't make the schedules, uh, Kilius. No, we don't. And the schedules sometimes do load in. These lower place teams playing each other multiple times in a single week. Had a lot of hype matchups in previous weeks, but this week it has been a lot of the bottom of the table clashes. The bot lane should favor the side of the Rocks Tigers as Bard is one of the strongest laning supports, especially at level one. But now actually being surprisingly passive, but we know Key can turn it on on the Bard. In a while since we've been treated to the pick, but fun to see. He's just hovering for the moment, looking for that window of opportunity. The lockdown in onto Max and try to harass out that Tom Kench early. He's actually going to get level two before Song Yun. Gets a bit of extra experience out of lane to interact with that. Now the jungle pathing very, very defensive. See pings for vision. 
as Beyond is spotted on the Raptors. Yeah, Hawkshot comes through, keeps track of him. How Rocks will adjust with his newfound knowledge. Seems like so far, still just going to be mirrored starts as Sung Wan and Beyond just start making their way down towards this bottom side of the map. So have the Rek'Sai playing around the bottom side. It's largely a full clear. Not the Gromp, but wants to be there for coverage unless Sung Wan is looking for an early gank. So far, it is eluded. Sung has been able to get the early push in top side. Kind of surprising, but moment that Jarvan Uses his Q, it's quite a long cooldown at level one, and wave clear is certainly not massive. Where will the excitement come from this game, Achilles? That's kind of what we're waiting to find out. If it arrives at all. Well, at some point a Nexus will probably explode, so that's pretty cool. I don't know, could just end up with that infinite game that we've been talking about. The infinite loss streak is also possible for MVP. Yep. Unlucky 13 in this particular game. Can't make it to 17, which is the record in the first round robin, so little victories. That's true. But uh, they can definitely surpass it overall. So That's true. Uh, maybe minor victories, massive losses. I think both teams have struggled to have the glass half full this season. So one hovering here in the brush. Beyond is nearby. They don't spot him yet, and ADD is still pushing forward, but he's cheating around the minions. See, that scrying plant does go out. doesn't spot the Elise. They will clear out this vision, and they will keep tabs on the Rek'Sai, so neither jungler are going to be getting involved at the moment. Hope these top laners will remain safe. Item timings mean so much for the Fiora versus Jarvan matchup. In the current meta, both of them go very similar build paths. Level 6, like we say, is probably going to be the biggest story when Beyond and ADD hit level 6. You can play around topside very cleanly, but around that time we also might see the lane swaps that can be enacted into the topside. Beyond already power farmed his way to level 4. No sign of the old school Courage of the Colossus for your uh, Rek'Sai. We are in this new Bruiser meta where Rek'Sai builds some degree of attack damage and that makes more sense to be going further, which was always Beyond's choice as well as a keystone, even yeah. with the old Fior with the old Rek'Sai. Fervor with the warrior enchant. Which is what we're getting. Could be getting a Tiamat too. Who knows? That's true. Could be rushing that one down. Could be both. Damn. The warrior Tiamat. For the mid-game explosion, one way or the other. He's getting bopped right now. Quite a bit of damage there. Wunderung will fire back. ADD just now getting ready to recall. Still has that teleport available. We'll take different schools of thought when they're in lanes like this Jarvan versus Fiora lane. Let's start for the Vamp Scepter. Yeah, you're right. Linderong went Vamp Scepter and okay, so it's it's felt increasingly that if you go Ninja Tabi in a lane like this is the Jarvan, you just lose straight up. So Tiamat for a bit of wave clan, also all in potential has been the preferential choice. Both champions have pretty low base stats before you start getting points in the Golden Aegis, so I do prefer being able to balance both Wave Clear and the poke. As you can see, Linderong's already taken quite a lot. Get worked down. There's one more charge than that refillable, but and we got it. So far. We got our first Tiamat Rush Rex side. All right, he did it. Nicely done. Beyond getting back to his uh, former self. The reworked Rex side is sitting at zero percent win rate in Korea. A lot of teams messing with it. Umti played it a couple of times earlier this week. Bless has played it. Now we're seeing Beyond jump onto it. I mean, it's basically a match made in heaven because MVP almost has a 0% <laughs> win rate. <laughs> Which heaven is this, just to be clear? Uh, maybe I had those backwards. Uh, that's going to be the grand challenge coming down. ADD going low. One more tick to do it, but the Cataclysm comes through. Repulse is out there from Linderung to deny that damage as Beyond arrives and he just has to abandon the J4. Level Last five, retreat. level five from Beyond. So didn't have that extra gap close of the ultimate or the burst damage, meaning they had to pull away. So escorts ADD out of the fight at least. Watching bot side, Elise in position here. They have to get onto Tom Kench, otherwise the Devour is going to be the easy answer. Let me find it. Key. 
They have the ultimate ready to go. They will be pushing out. Ulti comes down, locks up in on Damaha. They jump on the max. Will he go down though? Tanking on the turret comes through and it's actually first blood over to Maha at the end. Even with the ult onto the turret, it doesn't work out. Oh. Well executed by Rox to start, but then the extra turret shots going over to Songwon means that they get the extra gold advantage. Mickey trying to come in to at least spare the blushes. Maha's pushing his pretty way high down. Health. Magical journey comes down. Maha will be slowed up, however. Flashes back, tries to get himself saved. Couple more shots will do it. And there we go, Mickey does pick up the hit. Uh, Kido, what? Oh, okay. That's the turret, so given the scenario where if he'd gone the long way, he definitely would have died to Ian Beyond. Okay. You'll take that as a preferable choice. Uh, this is this is true. It looks very confusing at first, but you are correct. Would have been handing over a return kill. Well, when someone takes as many turret shots as their level at level four, it's usually uh, not the best sign. <laughs> He's level six. All right, I, I misled the chat. Feels bad, man. Still, it was way too many. Sure. Way too many shots. But we're firing today as well. Lenderong doesn't have Grand Challenge. Has it now. Doesn't want to go all in onto ADD. Oh, Lenderong. It's a lot more non-committal uh, with the poke, with the Q. Yeah. Well, not at the point where you have two items and oh. you see Q and you're all in. So it's just free poke from ADD at this point in the game. Hurts the watch, Linderong will go ahead, throw down the Grand Challenge. Gets two swipes, but gets knocked up. The Cataclysm will take him out. Flash to the side from ADD does put him into that Ash Arrow as the rest of the team comes collapsing in. Cosmic Finding comes down as he ages, and there's the Devourer. They fire back, and now the Tongue Lash in on the Songyu. They want to turn this one around, MVP. Looking for the kill, and he caliber net. Or the, rather, the Piltover Peacemaker connects in on the Song Yun, but they will not find that kill. This time, Max in position at just the right time. Both sides collapsing. Maha came through the river and actually put free damage onto Song Wan to stop his ascent as well into the fight. So no one goes down. Lane Swap enacted it nine minutes after the first purchases. Thought it was going to be kill and more for the side of Rock's Tigers, but that advance is slowed by Max's positioning. Really good wrap around there. Max saving that J4's life, keeping things nice and even. Not looking to give any edge over to the side of MVP. We'll be able to clear out this ward. Max started cheating forward, threatening that tongue lash. And Beyond had the tremor sense though, so didn't necessarily need to have vision onto Orion and know what was up. Right, we'll just return to mid. He's been roaming a lot more than you'd expect on the Orianna, but so far had good result from it. Equal on CS and getting a kill involvement. Let's you know that the action on the map has not been answerable by Ian. Doesn't have Ghost himself. Had to go cleanse to answer the Ash Arrow, so crucially, and we'll be more rooted to the mid lane. An Ash Arrow, Cocoon, Cosmic Binding. a bunch that it'll save him from. Knock up, not going to connect on the Linderong. But the Chaos Storm, there's only so much you can do. As a Fiora, a couple more turret shots would have been necessary to take down ADD. So the roam from Ian finally finds some action on the map, picks up a kill. We didn't see this much in game one, but rotating through the Fiora lane in multiple different ways can be smart. We saw MVP do that in the top lane. That's why they were in position for the Devourer. But you can also do that and prey upon her low wave clear. Remember, it's just Vamp Scepter and the double longsword complete at this present point. It's out onto Tom Kench. Yeah, goes in, locks him down. Ash Arrow going to go wide now. Song Yun, maybe in a bit of bother, does not have any mana. We'll be chunking away at this one as the TPs come through from both these top laners. Linderong joining this in the fight, he's just going to be taken down by the look of things. Ace in the hole does come out. Key to block it, even though the post was there. Miscommunication from the members of the Rocks Tigers. Grand Challenge does get thrown down as ADD falls to one final hit, but he has the Dragon Strike to pick up the double kill in the end. MVP want to stop this streak at 13. Looking like they'll be able to do it. Answering teleport at the right time. The damage now affects everyone in the Cataclysm. So even the Riposte isn't the right thing. That's why he was able to ult onto Key and still get the damage onto the Fiora. Nice stuff coming through from MPP. Good discussions. First brick as well. We may actually have a three-game series in the streak. Maybe over for MVP. Quite possibly. Yeah, not allowing the ace in the hole to be eaten Key. Maybe would have walked away with his own life. But... They botch it a bit, and Rox is just really trying. As soon as the Ash Arrow hits, you would expect maybe the disengage, maybe even just cancel the TPs, but they both come through with it. I mean, he's so smart with the Bard. He knows that if he ults Tom Kench, that Caitlyn will continue to run away, and he'll be out of position for the Devourer. You see the replay, like you say. The Riposte doesn't actually block the ult. The AoE gets onto both the Fiora, and they can 
just brute force tank it down. Both of them living on a single turret shot's life. The Ash zoned away as well. Oh. This is a big fight here. Yeah, Rift Herald's coming through. Songwon here does have the smite available. Takes that one away, but they have to back out the backside of the pit. And that means they don't get the buff. It's only going to stay there for so long, so maybe they just don't get themselves a Rift Herald. It's some number at less than 30 seconds, so we'll see. Come on, Key. It seems like, yeah, I mean, Jarvan and certainly Tom Kench's time is best used to stop this from being taken. I want to see the suicidal magical journey in for it. Just go in through the thick side of the wall. And die. And pick it up. Well, you can't be in combat when you're picking it up, and Tom Kench is tasked with holding onto it. They do actually jump over his oh, Linderang's low. Well, he's got the Blast Cone available beyond looking to cut him off, so he's just going to go straight in, try to cut through the turrets, maybe even just kill himself. But he's in the holes there this time, and he will go down. Maha puts another kill on the board for himself. All they get out of all of that was the Rift Herald buff, which, if they can use it well, may be actually worth the kill. Oh. It's hard to evaluate his ADD. Yeah, it does go low. Not going to pursue any further. Thought maybe we'd see the bar, bar to ultimate out to try to lock up that J4, but they don't do it. Instead, they will just go ahead and pop up the Rift Herald here in this top lane. So and if you think about it, it does mean that a kill over time leads to, at minimum, an outer top lane turret. That is something for the side of Rock's Tigers. But would you rather have one turret in a one-off or a Mountain Drake to help you take all the rest? And also, we have to see the full ramifications of all of this. They're going to get a second charge in a bit more damage than... Yeah, MVP is taking both the Drake and potentially the outer bot lane turret. Yeah. Can always be a delayed process to evaluate what's happening as they look in the mid lane as well. So much objective focus at the same time across the map. Yeah, for real. It's going to be that tier one going down to the bot lane right as Beyond finishes off the mountain Drake. Meanwhile, in the mid, Mickey throwing out that shockwave. Chunks out ADD and Max quite a bit. And we'll finally get an Inferno on the board. A lot of damage on this mid lane turret. Should probably fall in the next minion wave, which would mean that Rock's Tigers did actually get that extra turret, Achilles, and it was only a Mountain Drake, so pretty 50-50 overall. Yep, we'll be taking this one out. Beyond comes in, looking for Key, will take him out, but he takes quite a bit of damage from the Orianna. Has to high kill it out of there with the tunnel system. Does get himself out to safety now. Song one being hounded down by Ian, kills him with the Death Ray. And MVP, they lose the turret, but they put two kills on the board yet again. Eight to two now. Rock's Tigers got baited into a fight by overextending for that very low health turret. So many objectives traded means the big gold injection into the game at 15 minutes. 2,000 gold lead between the two, largely representative of the extra kills for MVP. And they've gone on priority members because Jarvan does have a hard time over the extended laning phase against Fiora. But that hard time is being set to the 35, 40 minute mark. It's Fiora 0 and 4 capable and Matching in CS, but certainly not in kill involvements. Yeah. And even then, matching in CS, not going to be great. 100 here in 16 minutes, just about. So even the farming from both sides hasn't been fantastic, but ADD is uh, very much making up for it. As far as his scoreline is considered, 3-0-2 on that J4. The 0-4-0. So, pretty rough stuff. If your name is Linderong. The number's definitely simple. The builds here also worth talking about. Beyond has gone double AD early items. The Warrior Enchant and the Tiamat. Very mid-game focus build. Uh, if he doesn't snowball from here, if he dies in the next fight, which certainly you make a miscalculation, you will die as effectively a melee assassin with a build like this. Very low base stats onto the Rek'Sai compared to the previous identity of Tank Rek'Sai. MVP are looking for picks. They are building and loading themselves into the mid-game, whereas late-game... Rock's Tigers will have a lot more options. Still very difficult to contest whenever they start pushing up. It's going to be the shockwave down. Beyond, like you said, very squishy. Ultimate comes through here for Key. Looking for the double cosmic binding. Finds one. They will get the cocoon in onto Max as he flashes over the wall. Looks like he will take himself out to safety, but Beyond goes down. And Well, you said it. It happened. He is uh, not tanky at all. And that's the thing is that you kind of fall back into play patterns when you bring back a champion you've played a lot in the past, like Beyond on the Rek'Sai. That sort of contest with a Cinder Hulk tank Rek'Sai in previous metas is fine because Rek'Sai Tremor Sense able to face check, very safe to do so. When you're full damage, you are insanely squishy with this build. You basically need Tom Kench to devour on command. The contest came in and it was just almost a one rotation burst from Mickey onto beyond you need to choose your opportunities very specifically when you go this squishy a build 
on the wreck side, maybe just draw in the Jarvan teleport early, allow him to frontline. They didn't do that, and it was just a donation over to the Rocks Tigers. He got destroyed. Didn't see whether that was a steal actually by Beyond before he went down. Was contesting the red buff, and then when we cut back over, had one, so maybe he got it with the Prey Seeker. Not positive, either way, lost it in the end. The build slows down. Titanic Hydra would be his ideal second item, but that is a lot of gold spent into AoE and combat stats. Not a lot of gold spent into not exploding instantly, specifically to Mickey here. It's not like Mickey had a massive amount of ability power and was already chunking him out and then some. Mickey and Mickey. Well, that's going to be the tunnel over the wall. Mickey going to be pinched in on as that gas comes through. Shockwave not going to connect onto Ian, and he will be picking up the kill. Well executed there by MVP. Mickey uses everything to try to get himself out of there safely and cannot do so. Yeah, Mickey hit the ultimate. Was hit by the ultimate of the Rek'Sai, and that did the rest of the damage after the Chaos Storm had begun it. So with that pick, trying to rotate around mid lane, AD posturing around the backside. They want this out of mid lane turret. Yeah, it seems like they're going to be able to get it. The respect being shown here by Rox, well deserved by MVP at this point in the game. 3.3 thousand gold in the lead, and they're looking for a little bit more. Wave is nowhere nearby, only a couple minions here with them. And it's a Fiora they comp. Still get quite a bit of damage down onto this tier two. And it's a Fiora comp, so you're not really worried about backline access. You know the Orianna isn't there to combo any sort of engage, so Rock's Tigers, even with traditional initiation tools, back away. So respect to the side of MVP. Much better use of the Rex side. Now it's a lot about getting advanced vision, using the Tremor Sense to find picks, and then, you know, a couple of spells and the Void Assault. You certainly can get the picks like we saw on your screen. So more plays like that where they have vision supremacy is the right way to use the Rex side in this current map. Well, already have that Mountain Drake. 35 seconds out from the Infernal, our first of the day. First Mountain Drake as well. Well, changing things up from the cloud oceans that we saw there in game number one. And it's already been way more action packed. Nine kills. There's 20 minutes oh. into this one. Oh, Blasco knocks Song one into the red pit, has to flash out to safety. Doesn't quite have the Drake either to repel onto, but thankfully Bard is in position. Key has kind of been back to his majestic best in this game. I like all his decisions that he's made specifically with the Tempered Fate. Try to get advantages for the side of Rock's Tigers, but. When you start to fall behind, when you go for the Fiora and can't build around the split push, Bard and Fiora are kind of going to be the free kills in a lot of these fights. Scoreline doesn't necessarily make you smile, as there is that Infernal Drake you spoke about earlier, Seth. Yep. Scuttle Crab. Vision is there to go ahead and spot this one out. So Rox, they see that it's happening, but it's just really not a damn thing that they can do. They just have to watch this go away as MVP picks up the second Dragon. We'll flip over, it's going to be yet another mountain break. So the dice very much rolling in favor of MVP. It's, you know, you know what, it's, it's all about the blue side. That's what it is. You've got to appreciate the loaded dice when sometimes the game, especially game one, was a glacial base. That's oh one, two my. spells from Linderong, and 70% of his HP disappears. I'm not confident that he can actually lane into ADD either, despite usually the matchup being a pretty comfortable one for Fiora for quite a while now. And that's where everything falls apart. It's why we wondered about the Fiora in this particular game. Coming through from Rocks Tigers, they went something more traditional. Which would have had significantly more options, but they flashed Jace and then went Fiora. And then when the early game goes away, this can be the result. I think he does get that blue buff in the end. Ian throwing out that blind death ray, not quite able to take that one away. Would have just been salt in the wound at this point. As Mickey is very much the hope for this team to have some success. Needs the Wombo to come through. The question now for MVP is how do you finish the game? And they've certainly been in that position a couple of times this season, and the answer has eluded them. You look at the enemy team, and the enemy team is very, very good at fighting around Baron. You don't necessarily look at the Fiora, but at least can repel in, very good at getting steals. Orianna, when you're on the red side especially, you pop the ball over, Anything can happen with the Shockwave, and Sang Yun has access to the Hawk Shot. Even Bard can reset the aggro. So fighting and actually trying to rush down a Baron, sneak a Baron, like we saw Rox Tigers do in Game 1, is not a way MVP wins this game. That is the wrong move from them. What they need to do is work out what they have, which is Jarvan, strong, accelerated,
teleport wards in the red side jungle, getting a pick to open things up, playing around the strength of the Jarvan is the way for MVP to close this game. We've seen them so many times opt into a smite war. This is a losing smite war. Even if they get the steal or get the claim, it is a mistake with the comp they've drafted to actually try to overforce around Baron. Well, if I know MVP, so they probably won't listen to your uh, advice, but you never know. Maybe they will wise it up and avoid that Baron pit for a considerable amount of time. Tempered Fate comes through. Maha flashing away. Not quite going to get clipped, but the Baron comes down and Max is getting locked up. Does flash in the end as the Shockwave comes down and Maha will actually pick up the kill onto Mickey. Here's the Cataclysm. Coming on the side, locks down two with that Cataclysm. Cataclysm as the damage comes through. Song Yun, the fadeaway volley, does come up with the kill. So a one for one thus far. Not that much of a discernible lead for either side, but with Linderong picking up this tier one turret in the bottom side of the map, seems like rocks will come out on top. It looked like Linderong used the ultimate as Jarvan was challenging Teleport. That's why he was low and basically died after the Flash Cataclysm. Gets the turret as well. Linderong won't choose to teleport, would not be useful in trying to wave clear under turret. So a good decision overall by Linderong meant that that was a one for one for rocks. They used so much to take down Max. Thought they could get the double kill onto the Caitlyn. Sidestepped enough, held his Flash to the right moment and largely evacuated Maha from any of the immediate danger. So one phone with how much rocks invested. Certainly not ideal from their part. MVP, not going to be getting too much vision. Still won't be starting up the Baron, so we kind of return to a bit of normalcy after all that action. Yeah, do get that tier two in the mid lane. So do end up trading up overall as far as the map control is concerned. So MVP still going to be in a very comfortable spot. Pat on the back to Max. Keeping himself and Amaha alive for so very long. Rox will just hope that now MVP will go back to their old playbook, which is extending the game and not knowing how to grow leads from this position. Getting more and more items onto Linderung after his horror laning phase is the big priority for the side of Rox Tigers. Vision War is getting ready to come out. Tempered Fate comes down, does find Max. He's got Ian in his belly. Opsack Great Health Shield tries to keep himself alive, but this time it's not going to be enough. Songwon. We'll be able to go ahead and queue him, then execute damage, get that final hit in. As Linderong maintains his foot push going forward. And this is where the game gets tougher for MVP because, again, we keep having to remember it's a damage rex site. He's gone further into damage, working onto a black cleaver. He cannot be face checking. Max can also be taken down by the Tempered Fate. Either of them being locked up is going to be an almost certain kill for Rox. That's why Rox actually have supremacy around the Baron. Now, start. They're pretty squishy, so this is risky. Seems like it was maybe an accidental engage. So I'll take a magical journey out of the pit. Just wanted vision control, perhaps there was a misclick on the Baron. Started the attack, but they will go ahead and exit. So no start on that yet. And MVP now can't do more. Because they don't have tankiness on Rek'Sai, they can't put up vision and start the Baron. They don't have teleport on the Jarvan, so the vision behind the pit isn't as valuable. That's why until the teleport's back up from MVP, sadly probably their best bit, best bet is to push up minion waves, purchase, and just add some time onto that game timer, Achilles. Sounds excellent. It's We're only 26 minutes into this one. I'm ready to go. Where to? Where do you want to go? Uh, 30 more minutes and... I thought you were going to say. Two seconds. I thought you were going to say seconds, another go. country or perhaps even another district of Seoul. I didn't realize you meant ready to go longer in the game. Yeah, you know, I want to break that record, man. I'm all about the long games. So, were you a Guinness Book of Records kid? I yeah, know, I, I, I know, I was. What was your year? Because I mean, I'm significantly older than you, so I don't know what like what the what what year you remember where you bought the book and that was kind of like your Bible for the year. Probably like '97. 98? I was very young the first time that I bought one of those. Do you remember which one was the hologram one? There was a hologram one. Yeah, that, that I was 2000. Okay, I the, definitely the green, had that. The green hologram one? 97? You would have been young. You would have been like six or something, right? Uh, that would make me five. 91. Born in 92. That's true. Okay. But, uh, no, I mean, you're Does every kid go through that phase where the Guinness Book of Records is just the coolest thing? Well, so what we had, I don't know if you had this when you were growing up, but what we had in, in you know our middle schools in the States was the Scholastic Book Fair. Yep, yep, okay. Yeah, so they would always come around and they would have the you know the Guinness Book of World Records there. And then also 
those uh, cheat code books. Yes. For you know Game Boy and uh, N64 games and everything. Like remember whatever cheat was out codes? Time. Yeah. Or you remember Game Shark? Yep. Good cheat Lord. codes and Game Shark. You know what they've been replaced with? Download. <laughs> yeah. DLC, baby. You want to make the game easier? Pay us money. Nineteen ninety nine per map. We can talk about that in this game because you can't buy that sort of DLC in League of Legends. It's all cosmetic. It's true. Except for that Colm Award. That will actually improve your play. I, it must do, right? So that's uh, that's the one thing that you can actually buy that will improve your performance. In 20 years, people won't understand our fascination with the Guinness Book of World Records because you just kind of look things up on Wikipedia and you get that initial information. But having that omnibus like in Carter and the Guinness Book of World Records just won't be a thing in 20 years' time. Yeah. I feel like it's already maybe not even that much of a thing now. I know. I mean, like, if you want to look up a world record, you just go to Guinness's website instead of buying their book. But now... On another note, Linderong will be getting jumped on as Maha wraps around. Makes his way out of the Cataclysms, just trying to buy some time as he cuts down the lane. But what's happening on the rest of the map? We don't really need to focus on bot lane. Bit of inevitability about this. For now, it's just the posturing of the Rocks Tigers. Wow, that's, speaking of good posturing, that's good positioning on the redemption there, and they okay. actually get him out. Nicely done by Rocks Tigers. Yeah, good wrap around there from Key, having that magical journey, taking the safety. They do have that flash down, though. Under threat, goes down to about half HP as Beyond leaps forward, looking for Song One. will repel up into the air, has to come back down, does have the flash, will flash away to get himself out of safety as Mickey starts pushing forward, Ash Arrow comes through. Shockwave's not there, already been used. Mickey goes in, just looking for the dissonance, perhaps, to get some damage in, but on, on the other side of the fight, Ian will go down. Linderoff, dangerously low, gets taken out by ADD, but who is now way too far forward. Song Yun firing away on this Ash, will be able to finish him off. As Key goes through the magical journey just to cut him off in case he was able to get away. But now Rox maybe looking at this Baron perhaps. MVP's team fight positioning let them down in that cl climactic final fight in game one. Does it again here. Didn't really see how Ian got himself such a bad position. Oh Rox is going to try and rush down the Baron. Contest will come from MVP beyond this one level up. The smite could be here. I think he's got the shockwave ready to go yet again. Baron going low. Tempered Fate not going to connect, and that will be the Baron going over to the Rocks Tigers, who are maybe starting to turn this game around, keeping the gold so very close. 600 between these two squads, and MVP is the one with the double Mountain Drake and the Infernal. And we, every time we see teams at the bottom, we have specific things we ask for them to improve, and Rox is improving their Baron setups. Decisive when they had a Control Ward down. We'll see the replay first before we talk more about that. As the fight went on, everyone got low. There was about seven flashes blown in 10 seconds. We were waiting to see what would actually be the big NJ. Shockwave is down here, otherwise they win the fight instantly. The Rocks Tigers at the top side. Ian walks in, Linderung is already down pretty aggressively, and Ian is caught completely in no man's land after the Devour was used earlier to keep him alive. ADD over pursues as his fellow solo laner goes down. Rox makes a good decision around Baron, which lost them the game against SKT in game one when they were way ahead. Now they have that Baron, and they're looking to crash into this inner turret bot lane. That's a really deep TP coming through from ADD. He's going to be he spotted on wards too. Out, he will be spotted out. They see him coming in. Linderong starting to pinch into that mid lane. Trying to get that turret taken out. Key is here. Takes the magical journey over to the side as ADD tries to close in the distance. Has the Cataclysm ready to go, but no flash. That would really be able to get him on top of the likes of Song Yun. Bit of tug of war here. They're trying to keep drawing interest as Fiora tries to split push the mid lane in a turret. So you won't see them fully disengaged. They have dissonance. They have the magical journey. They can walk up quite a lot, the Rocks Tigers. If they can. For now, do find themselves in a lead, tying up the turret count at 4-4. Four to four. Still no dragons for these guys. Think about how much faster this would be for Linderung on the split push if he was the one with that double mountain drake. I mean, look at how much MVP has had. They've had the run of the early game. They're only 1,000 gold behind. They're winning in kills. They had very high-value drakes. They need to not make those colossal misplays in team fights, otherwise all that good work means nothing, Achilles. Yeah. And they're chasing forward, still looking for something. Cataclysm ADD available. Cataclysm does come down, finds Mickey and Song. He's shockwave used in onto the J4 to try to take him out. Mickey goes low, but it is able to kite his way out to safety, and it's just an absolute slaughter so far on both sides. A two for one for the Rocks Tigers. And Song Wan tries to limp away. Can he make it out of here? Ian getting that burst of move speed off the Q will be able to finish him off with the death ray. The two for two in the end. Rocks still with a Baron buff on several members, but will be expiring. In not that much time. Yeah, the front line went down, but crucially, Ian, Maha, and Max were near full health, so there could be no more in the fight. We'll see the replay. Now, Rox Tigers have Baron, so 
A trade that's even for MVP is exactly what they're looking for. They do not want to mess up on the Cataclysm Engage. But basically, the Rocks Tigers use everything on ADD and beyond because they need to find space for Sangyun. Sangyun moves up, thinks he's going to take down Maha. But for once, Ian is in a great spot in a team fight. Basically assassinates him in the back line. No way for Songwon to go out because his uh, little spiders gave some move speed first and then got him down with the death ray. We're still all tied up. Kilio still MVP desperate to go 1 and 13 in the space of 14 games. Whereas Rox really just trying to help out MVP and put them into the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest LCK losing streak. You know, we probably have to inquire with Guinness as to whether that one's there. But it should be. Bringing it back around. Encarta was really cool when I was a kid. <laughs> That's, again, Wikipedia just completely ate their lunch. Well, Linderong's all alone. Yeah, and he's gonna die more than likely. Flashes away. Cataclysm's there to answer. And he will go down. No GA on this Fiora. As he is still just looking for that Bloodthirster. But, uh, you know, when you're 0 6 and 2, there's not that much gold being spilled over into your pockets. With the items he has, still a threat in the split push, but kind of needs his team, the remaining core of four, to make things happen. Happily for him, Mickey is closing in on four items, probably working on his death cap. They've been doing a lot with decision making here, Rocks Tigers, even if their comp identity of having a split pusher and a team fight four and the split pusher being way behind doesn't make a lot of sense, but okay. increasingly things like the Drakes are counting against them. That's a second Infernal over to the side of MVP. This is one of the highest value Elder Dragons we've had in a long time. I think that if MVP loses this game at this point, maybe we just auto-relegate them? You know? You know? You're gonna reach out to Riot Korea and Casper and see if you can get that one past them? I might, I just might. <laughs> like, look at what they got. They couldn't win the game. Spare me, please. Can I come in the room and see their response when you suggest this through a translator? <laughs> Maybe some blank stares for sure. A lot more Papatlas casts after that. Yeah. I appreciate you taking one for the team, though. <laughs> Rock's just keeping the map separated. I like this. I just looked up which team would be promoted in over them, and it's Damwon Gaming. Let's leave that for another day. They're the top of Challenger right now. Damwon. Probably pronounce like that. Keeping the map separate as much as possible. Hoping against hope they can just get gold onto Linderang. And unfortunately for them, 35 CS advantage means so little. There's lack of kill involvement. Still doesn't have a Bloodthirster. Surprisingly, com uh, competitive in gold because of all the standing gold has gone the way of the Rocks Tigers. But with his current item timings and... Their game plan hasn't really been able to cause that much impact. Speaking of impact, though. Looking for Beyond. It's going to be Timber Fate coming through Cocoon there to ensure that it will connect. Redemption thrown down as well as the Ash Arrow, and he's just going to fall Shockwave. Not even needed, but Mickey uses it all the same. ADD now arriving off the TP on the backside. Cataclysm comes down, locks in three members, but he has to flag and drag his way out. As Linderong cancels out the TP, wants to continue that split push down in the bottom side of the map. Try to start knocking down those inhibitor turrets. And we used a lot, sorry, Rock Tigers used a lot to take down Beyond, but Baron has not spawned yet. Usually, jungler dying means Baron. But not being on the map just means that Linderong will be able to push in another wave. They will be able to get better vision down, but they don't have a control ward onto the pit at this present point. So only have five seconds before the Rek'Sai is back up. Seems like they might just be trying to rush it down. It's not old Rek'Sai. It feels like we yeah. have to keep reminding. Doesn't have global presence anymore. There is no Void Rush, but, I mean, they need Songwon to just throw down a control ward. You got two in the inventory, my friend. Well, it's not going to do it. They're going to try and rush down the Baron. Oh, there's Victor. nobody there. He's going to walk up, but you're right. It's going to be a half-hearted contest at best. And Ian. Oh. oh I, I was holding my breath for that one. Didn't want to say anything until I saw it confirmed, but Baron will go over through the Rocks. Tigers, Ian nearly had it, which would have been an absolute miracle for MVP. But now Baron over to Rocks yet again. They knock down another inner turret in the top lane. Just that one in mid standing. The wrong still trying to be as much of a nuisance as possible. But MVP, they do have this Elder Dragon on the way where they can try to force MVP into a fight, but or force Rocks into a fight.
but they still have to be so worried about that shockwave from Vicky. All right, at pretty insane proportions now. Farmed himself casually to 410 CS at 37 minutes, and six items going to be on the way with, looks like probably a Ludens as yep. the final pickup. Could be a Lich Bane, I guess. That would be pretty Mickey. <laughs> Those auto attacks already deal enhanced damage. Power of Evil was running the Nashos Tooth. Oriana in EULCS. I was actually a big fan of that, oh, but we'll talk about it later. Let's put that on the Mickey. He's just getting melted. Shockwave not going to do a damn thing to Ian. Even with all that AP, he's just going to get popped back up by the Redemption. And Mickey goes down. Good collapse from MVP. That was a very Mickey-esque moment, wasn't it, Kilios? Yep. He is known for the solo missions, a bit ambition style in that. They're trying to actually collapse onto Ash, but able to just run away. Linderung with Baron buff, even at 0-6-2, will have quite a lot of threat on the bot side. So already Jarvan is being called, but they have double Infernal, double Mountain, so he can take turrets with Orianna dead for 30 seconds very quickly. I mean, look how much damage this turret's taken. It gets melted down, inhibitor should fall here. Double Cosmic Binding does come through as Linderong tries to finish off the turret. ADD with a flag and drag back through with a flash in for the completion. Linderong comes up with a kill, and actually the inhib will not die. They instantly Linderong. pull back, and Baron buff with the Fiora pushing in, but they're going to keep buying time. They want him to end the game. They're going to try to delay this as long as possible. Ian, the best one in a position to make his way out, but Linderong is going for the finish. Rocks Tigers, could they actually complete this here? Max has the Devour on to Maha. Just to keep running the down speed. for the That's first turn. Has fallen. Linderong looking for the next one. Can he actually do it? The rest of the team now coming through, and he's got to get out of dodge. But Linderong opens up the map so much here for the Rocks Tigers. Can he make it out with his life? Is the next question. The answer is hell yes. Yeah, he gets the bonus movement speed from finding a vital and the phage as well. Backs out as Rocks push through the mid lane. Really nice stuff coming through from the Rocks Tigers. Playing the map smartly. Base broken in two spots. They're looking for the finish here. Linderong comes in off the TP. Moves back down to the bottom lane, making sure things are moving in. But Song Yoon takes quite a bit of damage there from Maha. Has to get top back up, but the second inhibitor will go down. Game not going to end yet. So maybe Linderong with the TP, not the greatest of ideas. Can't put pressure down in that top side of the map, but very much opened up here for the Rocks Tigers, and it couldn't be better time because 20 seconds away, is that potential four stack buff here? Mickey. 480 for MVP. Mickey will get jumped on. Self shockwave. Now Maha arriving. He's going to go dangerously low. Ace in the hole coming through the shield. Is oh. it yes, it is. Barely so. He'll get popped back up. He's going to have to go back to base and rush back down towards that Elder Dragon, which is now spawning. In a game between two teams at just one match victory, the highlights have been the small areas where the Tigers are significantly better than MVP, specifically around neutrals and making decisive macro calls. Have they been SKT or KT? No, but they have been better. And that is what separates these two teams. Because MVP this time, like you say, they got the stacks deck. They got ahead in the early game. They had initiation, two infernals, two mountains, run of Baron for a lot of the game. And all that seems to be just an asterisk on what could be a very soon, a 2-0 Rocks Tigers win. And it's just so disappointing given how good MVP was in the spring, how they were in the summer of 2016. I love this team, Papa Smithy. I loved watching them. I love their wacky picks. Now it's just sad. Sometimes when you love something, you have to let it go free. Okay, I don't know if I want this one to come back to me. Sadly, it has to come back the, to us quite a few I think, times. I think it's the second part of that, that usual This saying, is definitely the workplace love, where you guys fall out of love, but you have to see them at work very frequently. Uh, That's MVP. Okay, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> How depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see her, depressed. Uh, my heart breaks again and again. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Linderong's going to pick up a red buff. They're just looking to finally break the base. They've been so dogged at playing the 4-1, even with a hilariously underfed Fiora. But largely, it's been smart. They haven't been caught outside of Mickey doing Mickey things. His flash is up this time, so he can be a bit sillier than usual. Okay, got to be a bit more careful than that. The ward's not quite worth it. Some creeps are being brought up into the bottom side and in the mid by Mickey and Linderong. As Song Yun just desperately tries to weave his way between those traps to get some shots onto the turret, but proving to be difficult. Okay, <laughs> okay. he's just playing with fire. They have to use the redemption Mostly for the selfish heal onto Keeb, they do have an Elder Dragon buff. Rock Tigers want it on this wave, but MVP still have the go buttons. Yeah, the wave clear is still so very strong here from Maha. 
So, seems like rocks will be delayed. How about another Baron? Sure, why not? You told me you were ready to go. You were ready for the late game. I know, so I'm saying, sure, why not? Remember, the next series doesn't start till 8 p.m. and we're at 7.06, so if it's gonna be a 2-0, it's still gonna be a break. I need time for my mind to recover from this. <laughs> During the break, am I gonna see you longingly bringing up pictures of the MVP logo and going full Wolverine on them? Yeah. No, actually, the only team I do that for is 2016 Rock Tigers. I'm right there with you, man. Yeah. But MVP is a close second. Well, we have one every year. Maybe. If you think about it, we had Fnatic 2015 into Rox Tigers 2016. Also had Origin. No, we, let's not talk about Origin. The thing about Fnatic is, like, Fnatic 2015, you're like, this could be the team to represent the West, right? Sure. And then 2016, we had, this could be the team to really take over SKT and, and dominate the field. We'll never know on either of those factors. So you wonder if we'll have a 2017, what if probably, right? With the way co contracts are going to be ending. A lot of things can happen. Think about sad things when it's 44 minutes into a game. Yeah. Well, inhibitor is getting ready to come back up. Lindrong still putting pressure down towards that bottom side. And the Baron is spawning. So we'll see how this one's going to be played out. ADD. Needed in two places at the same time. Skullcrab Vision is there. They do I spot think he has to teleport it. You don't bother with the Fiora. You try to win a fight. He's roaming up at the moment. The Baron has already gone down beyond. Caught out by the Tempered Fate. And they kill him. Kuhn and plenty of CC comes down. In the meantime, Linderong yet again getting that split push going. Will be able to take out this inhib But yet they're again. just losing in both those spots, Achilles. You say he needs to be in two places. He's in neither. He's in the middle. The middle loses the maximum from the side of MVP. I think he's really fast. Yes, he is. This an instant ghost. Zipping his way around. They're going to try to turn on the Linderong. But yet again, Guardian Angel's there. And now, minions empowered by Baron. The rest of the team pushing in. They'll take out the mid in hip yet again. And Rox Tigers. Seems like they're pretty poised to end this unless MVP can put on one hell of a show. I got the last auto as MVP finally do move up in unison. So, not quite the two... Inhibitors down, but soon to be, you'd have to imagine. Items are very close to six item point. We are 45 minutes into the game. Even Linderong's pretty decked out at this point. Probably is going to be that spirit visage to end the build and have the most lifesteal. Do wonder how this could happen, though, as six item Ian on the victor, at least, can expose someone if they face check him. It's got a Lich Bane as well, so... Powered auto off the siphon power should be doing quite a bit of damage. This will be a memorable game for me, Achilles. You know why that is? Key has been sick on Bard. You know, it's been a while since Key had a big Bard game. It's true. Thought it might be just a 2015 thing because he was like the great Bard before anyone else really playing him. The thing that I want to remember is just that, oh, Key is good at Bard rather than this game specifically. But that's going to be Tempered Fate yet again out. Catches he has on the so many meeps. He does. It's an army. He's an army. It is like Pikmin. Where's the Nationals' tooth last item? <laughs> Pump out the deeps. Well, Cataclysm being used on the Linderong. Will flash away. Guardian Angel still available. Nice repose on the Flag and Drag. The heal is there from the Shrine. You can just back and, and teleport Ooh. back in if they want to make something happen. They know Cataclysm is down at least. I think they do want to make something happen. Baron buff's already 50%, over 50% expired. Also, that's some uh, life still right there. Yeah, that too. So maybe he doesn't have to recall at all. Maybe he just sticks in here. I forgot about the double life steal. <laughs> There's no minion wave in top, so he's going to be focusing on this inhibitor while Orianna slowly clears out minion waves. Good movement speed here. Key just constantly dumping these shrines in the song and keeping him out of range of those death rays. You can only play around two lanes at once. And Durang is going to try and play the third lane, but does that mean that it's going to be half-hearted about both the inhibitor and finally breaking this top lane turret? The answer seems to be yes. So Mickey wants to try to push up, but he knows it. He has to sacrifice his Banshees potentially to get rid of one of those traps. They will now expire. The turret will get broken, as does that mid inhibitor. Remember Fate this time, not going to connect, but does zone people back, gives rocks a bit more breathing room. Two inhibitors down, three inhibitor turrets down. It's all adding up, it's all stacking up here for the Rocks Tigers. Baron going to be here for about another 10 or so seconds, I do believe. He'll be expiring soon, but rocks do want this third and final. Song Yoon able to push up, gets a couple shots in. Mickey, even two more from him would finish this off, but it's proving to be very risky. Grits come through, Key goes low. Cataclysm thrown down by ADD. 
he's gonna have to turn out of here immediately. Redemption comes through, healing him back up. And and the whole team. Escorting those minions in. Wave clear from Ian, still very strong. But the pressure is becoming insurmountable for the side of MVP. Couple more shots on the Song and actually for Song Wan rather, Maha does find the kill, but can they get more? journey down. Ian goes forward. That's a leap in from beyond. Helps lock him in. Takes him out. Linderong, even with everybody chasing out the rest of the members of, of the team, can't get into a position to finish off that final Nexus turret. Now, he might be in a spot of bother. The damage from the victor so huge. He'll get popped out of the GA. Gravity field thrown down just to lock him in. Has the repost, but falls in the end. Several members, three members dead on the side of the Rocks Tigers. One final Nexus turret standing. The Alamo for the Rocks, for the... Uh, MVP is real, Achilles. It is this final Nexus turret. They have nothing else to show for them. They win a fight because the overstay from Rox Tigers was comically long, but they overstayed and got three inhibitors and they already had a Nexus turret down. There's no counter objective to pick up during the death time as MVP will rush mid lane, push up the mid lane, potentially take the inhibitor as only Oriana, Elise, and Bard will be there to contest it. That's the most they can hope for in this scenario, and that's at 48 minutes into a game. Song Wan coming up, Song Yu going to be here soon. Key, does he want to use the Tempered Fate to try to keep this alive? Respecting Orianna, Ash only now getting out of base, so they don't even get that mid lane inhibitor. Yeah, bottom lane building up as well. So somebody's going to have to go back, respond to that pressure. Like it might be Ian's job. In the meantime, Rock's just charging they down the lane. They want to get movement speed on. They want to just delay these as long as possible. Ian is there. Tempered Fate comes through. Ash Arrow not going to connect. They just want the turn to go down. They do find it. Nexus now exposed, and there's still plenty of time on these inhibs before they respawn. The bottom lane has come back up. No flash onto Mickey. Remember, so Cataclysm will be very strong at trying to catch this Ariana. Mid and top. Still a bit longer before these if come If they up. run at the Nexus, it, there is still a fight MVP can win. Ian and Maha are stacked for damage, and ADD is no slouch either. And Linderong, he can't even push forward fearlessly because he doesn't have that GA up. So this is going to be a very difficult balance game from the side of Rock's Tigers. So often at this point, with Rock so far ahead, you don't even have to think about the final fight, but right Ooh, now, man. there is still a fight that MVP wins. Yeah, the death rate doing so much to Song Wan. Be careful, and Song you're not going to be getting much mileage with that volley. And now Banshee's fail back up. Seems like Rocks will just exit. They want to be able to take out that Elder Dragon that's spawning in 15 seconds. They need to deny that away from MVP. They can also get a double buff. They can get the Elder Dragon and the Baron with fairly little contest, you'd have to imagine. So MVP extend this game. We thought we were on a trajectory for a 45-minute victory, but the game is getting tougher and tougher for Rocks to finish but only because MVP are running out of places to fight around. Every time they come out, they can win a 5v5, but now, literally, the door is locked. They are stuck next to their Nexus with nowhere able further to go. As, again, I come back to just how big the amount of meeps is <laughs> for Key here. It really is like Pikmin. Walking around, Tempered Fate comes down. Tom looking for Max. Any pick is golden. Ash Arrow, perfectly timed, just come through. Flag and drag out from ADD as he tosses down the Cataclysm, which means Mickey is that much safer. And they say, screw it, you know what, we'll go ahead, we'll get that away from you, get rid of that ultimate, now we'll move over and focus out on that Baron. Linderong still drawing pressure down at the bottom side. You can see Ian and ADD pushing forward, trying to kill him desperately. They'll use the Epistle Voyage. They'll get popped up. They make it over the wall, throws down that Grand Challenge. Baron goes down, rocks Tigers, perfectly poised to end this game. Double buffs over to them. They just need to close it out. MVP. This would be an absolutely star-studded performance from them if they can deny this. This would be one of the most famous turnarounds if they can hold strong. They have nothing. You suddenly see shadows of the famous CJ Entis Blaze hold in a much lower stakes game. Don't get me wrong. But with how strong their team fighting is, Rocks Tigers will find it difficult to actually get past MVP and just end the game straight up. My first impression is if they straight run and ignore the damage of MVP, they will die. I think back to MVP's actual first game versus KT Rolls. That's going to be the damage coming oh. through already. Redemption thrown down. We'll get a bit of a heal coming in as Linderong goes back down towards that inhibitor. Let's take this one out top lane. One going to be respawning soon. Mid gets broken. ADD locked up at the Cosmic Binding with the Devourer is there from Max to keep him safe. So he spits him out and they move back towards the fountain. Insane that this is still a game. Inhibitor's respawning. 
But it feels like they're much like Baron and Elder Dragon, just not things MVP are concerned with. We're four minutes shy of breaking the record here so far for Summer 2017. Want to get all the minions in and rush in. Speaking of rushing in, they're trying to. Coming it. through, Song One going around the side, will get popped up by Beyond. The Nexus going down, a couple more shots will do it, and there we go. Song in finds the opening, and against all odds, Rocks Tigers will 2 0 this. It will be 14 0 as losses for the side of MVP. Oh, and 14, I suppose you should say. I mean, say. look at you their faces. See. You can see how long a series it is. The emotions are clear. Rocks Tigers did not enter summer thinking they would have to fight so hard for a second match victory. But at the bottom,